Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, good way to lose a trout. That's a good one. <laughs> well, go ahead and put that on the camera. That's all right. <laughs> hey, a big welcome to everyone who's joining me. This is John Miller again, and I wanted to talk to you about this fun little thing that happened to us last Saturday, uh, which is uh, early April in Louisiana. Uh, we were catching fish on shorelines and a little bit under birds and, you know, here and there bouncing around in some clean water uh, between Hopedale and Delacroix. And we ran into this section of water where there was definitely activity going on, uh, predator activity, because there were oil slicks popping up. Now, I'm not talking about oil slicks like the BP disaster uh, or the Valdez oil spill. I'm talking about fish oil slicks. And these are created when a predator will bust bait and the bait is fin fish. And then the oil will pop up to the surface. It will create a sheen and spread out over the surface. So it's very visible to, to an educated eye. So we pulled into this one area. There were a lot of crab traps there and there were these oil slicks popping up. Uh, we had been catching with popping corks, uh, like a swim bait under popping cork and some um, jerk baits like uh, Rapala, Shadow Wrap, uh, but none of those really worked in this area. So there was something going on, but nothing was hitting those other baits. So we started tight lining a swim bait on the bottom. Yeah, so my swim bait of choice for this was the Matrix Shad Green Hornet. The Green Hornet, which is a nice, more natural color uh, a pattern. It's got kind of a cream bottom and a green top with a kind of an olive green top with red specks in it. It's a really nice color and a, a really good bait. It's got the paddle tail, had it on a quarter ounce jig head. And uh, Started working it off the bottom, popping it, letting it sit, or just dragging it along the bottom a little bit. Started catching trout. And then this happened and we figured out why the trout were there and why we were catching them on the bottom, tight lining the swim bait. What kind of fish is that? It may be a little hard No, it's a little... Little croaker. Okay. Yeah. So it was a great bit of information that we snagged that baby croaker because that that gave us a pattern to work with. Now croakers are a great bait for speckled trout and redfish, uh, but they love the croakers, especially the little ones like that. Ah, finally, All right. a decent fish too. Should be. Oh my goodness, yikes. Do I want to flip this or do we want to get the net? This is a big fish. It's a big fish. It's wrapped in your line. It looks like it. Okay. Yeah. We also had another indicator that the trout were loving on the croakers. When we cleaned them, and one of the 14 inches had three croakers in its stomach. So just as a reminder of the life cycle of croakers, if we look back at the bait model that I did, we can see that the croakers will come in in the spring and summer, and then in the fall they'll go back out to higher salinity water to spawn. When the eggs hatch, the larva and then the immature croakers will work their way back into the marsh where they'll grow up. So by the time April comes around, they're a couple of inches long in the marsh. Yeah, so croakers live on the bottom. They eat crustaceans, so they'll eat shrimp and other creatures on the bottom. They also eat detritus, which is just organic trash on the bottom. And they, they, They'll clean at the bottom. So they like muddy bottoms, which we had a lot of, which we have a lot of in the, in the Mississippi River estuary. And we had it in this spot 
where we found them just now. And it was where a bayou was emptying into kind of a big pond in the marsh, in the inner marsh. Nice clear water. There's one. Oh, good one. Yep. Did it hit you on the bottom or did it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was letting it oh, down. Nice oh, yeah. Wow. Ooh. That's a that's solid a nice 16. One. Oh, yeah. And if you don't know, croakers are in the same family as speckled trout and redfish. Uh, even though they will all eat each other, Although I don't know if speckled trout eat redfish, but redfish will eat them all and speckled trout will eat the croakers. I'm here again with Mark Matthews at Superior Bait Tackle in Baton Rouge on Segan Lane and we're on the topic of catching speckled trout that are feeding on baby croakers. Now baby croakers we, we know are on the bottom, that's where they're eating. And uh, Mark's going to talk about some baits that he sells that are great imitations of those baby croakers and will work, will work great for targeting speckled trout. All right, John, it's always a good idea to try to match the hatch. I think uh, right now, this time of year, where we are as far as how long we've gotten into spring, uh, what we're trying to do is match the hatch on some baby croaker. I think you put a shot of what was coming out of the trout's belly uh, on some of what they've been eating. This would be a real good idea. This is the Voodoo Shad. Uh, they're very tough. They last a long time. Something more local, even more so than the Voodoo Shad, is this Mad Mullet. The, the Zimmerman, some great guys. Uh, Captain Lane's doing a real good job. He has the Death Grip uh, jig heads as well. Fantastic way to try to match the hatch there. Um, something that's been around for quite a bit long, you know, quite a while that we're all familiar with is the Tsunami uh, lures. Uh, we use these a lot in the fall and the, and the winter, but right now, in order to get to a, a excellent look uh, even with the smaller size uh, we can match the uh, baby croakers real well here and last but not least uh, for you could you should be able to get the storm minutes just about anywhere these are a great great lure to uh, chunk at them as well so this is the time of the year to find speckled trout feeding on those baby croakers so if you get out there in the marsh and you see the kind of indicators that we did with oil slicks and uh, some action on the bottom. Just try to imitate some croakers with whatever you've got, some, some kind of swim baits. I recommend dragging it on the bottom or popping it along the bottom because that's where the croakers are going to be. And get ready for some action. So wherever you live, I hope you can get out there soon. Target that favorite species of yours and uh, maybe think a little bit about matching the hatch wherever you are and with whatever's going on in the waters that you fish. And good luck.